What a Christmas. Well, I like that. You don't need a cat. You don't need a hat. You've got a cat when you've got a cat. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she basically just lands on my shoulders every day at the moment. So I'll throw her out in a minute. No, no, keep her on, keep her on. There's a very good film out uh, about a guy with a the, the, uh, a busker that yeah. adopts yeah. the cat. It's very good. Yeah. Mm. Morning, morning, Marcus. Morning. Good to meet good you. Morning, everybody. Hello. Morning. Morning. It, it, it could almost be a photographer's meeting today. I think I've got about five of you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but fortunately, it's the sort of meeting where you can all pool your ideas. Uh, Rebecca. <laughs> Um, our architectural photographer, and as if by the drop of a hat, Nick Cole, our branding photographer. Meet Marcus. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Morning, Marcus. I like it. I like meetings very inclusive, not exclusive. Very good. <laughs> That's always the way, though, isn't it? Morning, you know. morning you all. Mark, I can put my hat on today. How's oh, that? brilliant! Thank you. Hey. <laughs> yeah, but have you seen his feather? I've got a little feather on my hat. Oh, very sweet. You know that put a feather in your cap. Put a feather, feather, feather in mine too. <laughs> play that game. Yeah. I like, I like, I like Chris. I like Chris. Frighten the cat off. <laughs> <laughs> There's a competition going on here. The whole idea of uh, marketing crew was born out of. Uh, my background, first of all, in marketing, but essentially in networking. Uh, I was the uh, director consultant. I owned the franchise area for Somerset and Wiltshire, launched it back in 2002, and in fact, uh, established the brand in, the, in this part of the West Country. And uh, you can imagine over 10 years with tw uh, growing the, the region to about 12 groups, I've attended more business breakfast than you can ever wish uh, as a result, I ended up with a triple heart bypass three years ago. So, uh, um, and I noticed there uh, uh, and helping uh, businesses that, and we were focused at that time and always they are focused on developing referral strategies versus networking. And um, I noticed there that there was still something missing that I ended up talking to people about the different aspects of their marketing. And I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea just to get people on a meeting to really share their marketing experiences, to learn a bit about um, uh, marketing techniques and to learn more, of, more or less about the strategy of marketing. And I've developed, as you'll see there, five, um, five parts of a marketing strategy that you can anything that you're doing or are planning to do, you can fit in those five areas, whether it's online, offline, I don't care what it is. If you're going to grow your own business, launch a business, start a business, launch a new product, you need to be thinking about <clears throat> those five areas. And what we've done, beg your pardon, everybody want, you'll notice everybody wants something different from this. Uh, everyone has different challenges, priorities, fears. Um, we don't know what those are, not on the surface. And uh, in fact, everyone has different timing. And we have to connect and understand with prospects. What I should have said is you can't give the same pitch to everybody. And that tends to be the challenge. I've seen out of many, many networking events that I, I've been to, and I've been to thousands, uh, and I've seen them online where people turn up each week and they say the same thing about themselves and the same thing to everybody. And it is a disconnect because everybody is coming at this from a different angle. Everybody is different. All your prospects are different. So you can't say the same thing to everybody. And what we've covered so far has been the audience. We got a very clear picture and the importance of having a very clear picture is who is your audience that you're trying to get out to speak out to? Everybody is not your audience. Anybody is not your audience. The more specific you are about who you want to engage with, the better. And knowing it could be knowing what age they are, what uh, salary levels, what personal circumstances. Uh, it's people that have specific challenges that you know that you can serve. The second part of that is there's no point if uh, in uh, in your business being in existence unless you get in front of that audience and then engage with that audience. 
And Mark Stunham, a few weeks back, gave a fabulous uh, presentation on how he reaches out to an audience on a regular basis on LinkedIn uh, and how he brings that audience uh, into his uh, sequence, into the process that he has to build his business. Now, we record all of these uh, sessions and uh, that recording is available online for anybody that like it, but I'd go straight to the horse's mouth and uh, connect with uh, Mark on LinkedIn or after this meeting and uh, uh, get him to talk through that because it was really very valuable. Then we had Nick Sladek covering the fact that there's an audience out there that are very heavily distracted and it's very easy to be distracted nowadays. It's never been easier to market your business, but also never more difficult because the audience you want to get into is got a very short attention span. So Nick Sladek gave us a great session on how to use your messaging to get people to lean into the conversation rather than back away because they feel they're being sold. Um, and we also talked about the power of engagement um, because 82% of all sales are gonna take place after the seventh touch. And most people in business think that they have to buy after the first touch or maybe the second, and they give up after that. So it's knowing that part of your strategy needs to be in place to have ongoing engagement, ongoing the adding of value. And what we've since been talking about is the value of stories. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, sessions now on the value of stories because facts tell and stories sell. And I think that creative people are a bit of an advantage here because by being creative, they live in stories. And some of those stories are in the mind. Some of the stories are verbal. Whereas the difficulty, I think, and I can't really, I, well, I will generalize. The difficulty that solicitors and accountants and financial people have is because they're dealing in facts and numbers, they tend to think that that is what people buy. And they don't. We buy emotionally and justify logically. So if we're buying emotionally, stories bring out emotion. So we've been spending a lot of time on talking about how to craft stories, et cetera, the important. Stories touch on emotion, <coughs> people buy on emotion, they justify on logic. So if your sales process is purely facts, purely sales pitch, you are missing the mark. And if you're giving the same pitch to everybody, you're missing it even further. Now, there are different types of stories and we've covered some of those and it's important. Uh, and we covered the, uh, the, our own stories uh, last week. And again, that, that, that uh, video is available uh, online. But we said that this week we would start to tease out our prospect stories and there's a skill in that. It involves questions rather than presentation. People tend to feel they've got to talk about what they do and they've got to pitch people in the room. And in fact, Chris mentioned the word you. Whatever you do in uh, any of these uh, events, do not use the word you because people think you're selling to me. And it's not important that any of us on this call buy from anybody on this call. If they do, that's great. What's important is we want to, uh, first of all, share, generously share our experience, but secondly, as we will move eventually into the introductions and referrals, we want to teach people through stories who we want to be introduced to. And right now, none of us know who we all know. We've got a clue if we look into LinkedIn, but we don't really know who we know. We each could know your next best client. The trouble is we don't know who they are because we don't know enough. So, uh, so just, just so that you see the overall framework and as we go through this journey, this marketing journey, and you need a journey like this, you need to set something up like this for your own business. Who's the audience? How are you going to engage with them? What are you going to say? When are you going to say it? How are you going to say it? The whole sales process itself, how are you going to manage that? How are you going to cover, uh, cover objections? How are you going to use stories in that engagement, in that sales process? Um, and that's where most businesses stop. What we then will move on to is retention. There's no point in keep attract, spending money to attract new clients. If your existing clients are being ignored or feel they're being ignored, 
and they're, they're going to the competitors. So the whole subject of retention is fascinating. It's an area that a lot of businesses ignore. But if somebody's already committed time and money into using your services, you want to nurture that like you're nurturing any prospect even more, because those people are in the position to introduce you back to your new audience. And that is the route that is so easy to take if you know what you're doing and you're doing it on purpose. So what we said last week is that if you're going to get in front of a prospect, and this could be online, it could be face to face, it could be after a networking meeting, and you're in front of a prospect or even in front of a potential referral partner, how are you going to tease out their stories? What questions are you going to ask? What will you observe? I, in visiting hairdressing salons, was I, intuit intuitively, I was looking around me and I was looking sometimes at photographs or maybe a, uh, you know, a statue in the corner or something in the window, etc. cetera. Um, when I'm at a networking event, I absorb, observe all sorts of things. Uh, when I'm in a, a queue in a supermarket or on the market, somebody will do something and it allows me to engage in a conversation. Not everybody's got that skill or is, it feels like that, but nevertheless, what do you see that could strike up a conversation? I'm generally looking for something we might have in common. If you're preparing to uh, engage with somebody or somebody's engaged, um, what's on their website? Is there any clues on that website? What's on their social profile? Um, from calls yesterday, I've got two discovery calls this week, one of them at five o'clock today. I've already checked out her uh, LinkedIn profile so I can get to know a little bit about their background. And LinkedIn's great for that. Uh, so you can, you know, there's something could be on there that uh, you could bring up in conversation. Uh, what interests have they got? Just be curious about the other person ahead of even uh, talking to them. And then the key is to ask questions that will help you understand. And the art of that is asking questions in a natural way without appearing to interrogate them. Because if the tonality of your voice is such that you are uh, firing questions right, left and centre, it can feel like an interrogation. So there is a skill involved here. And assume nothing. Not everything that somebody tells you will be the whole story, especially in business, because we have this thing that we want to protect. We somehow feel vulnerable if we reveal any fears we've got or challenges uh, that we have. And you really want to tease those out because you may very well be able to help that person. Or indeed, you might know somebody that can help that person. And if you come to any conversation with a view of how can I help you rather than how can I sell you, you will get a lot more business and a, and a far bigger value. Um, these are some really good questions that you can ask. How did you, how did you get started? Not everybody is doing the job that they first started in. I was a police cadet. I've been in sales. Uh, good questions. Why did you? Why didn't you? What has stopped you? So if you're talking about people's uh, aspirations or uh, they say something, why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? What stopped you? In other words, they're really good questions to ask. Very good question at the moment. How has the lockdown affected you? How has it affected you on a personal basis? Then maybe has, it, has that affected your business? I'm sure many of you are using that question with your existing clients. This is a brilliant question. How do you see the rest of the year panning out? And watch for the body language at that point, because some people will reveal their, a fear, a concern. Other people will be very excited. I'm very excited about the year ahead. And I know Richard and, uh, and uh, Rod are, um, because, you know, we've got it pan panned out. But do people know why we're excited? So if somebody's fearful or excited, that's when you might dig in a little bit. Um, another question, if you had a budget or if you got some money back from the government, uh, what would you fix in your business first? That could be an appropriate question. 
because that could reveal where their priorities lie or where their ch challenges lie right now. And again, a good question always is the question, uh, why? So I'm going to go into breakout rooms. Can I just ask the photographers on here? What you're really uh, Rebecca laughing there. Uh, the, the, the new photographers on here. Hands um, free. Can I ask a question? Um, what are the, what are the challenges do you think you you've you've faced over the last twelve months? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, obviously, a lack of income coming in, and a lack of clients. And but working with people is when and people using your product gives you confidence and propels you forward. So that's really been missing, you know, without a doubt. You know, that confidence it gives you from just being busy and being wanted. Yeah, but I've still. Just, I have filled the time in with all the stuff that probably I would never have done. And looking back at it now, moving forward, I think I'm quite, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm quite grateful for the year I've just had, which, you know, because it's just given me time to really work on my back end of my business, the SEO, the CRM, all that kind of thing. Really think about what branding photography really means as well, which is I'm writing a book about it, actually. So, you know, the aesthetics of branding photography. So it's given me time to do all those things. And of course, to build up my network, which I didn't have at all, because I, I'm, I'm, even though I've been doing photography for over 20 years, in Bristol, branding photography, it, it, the business has been going maybe a year and a half, you know, and a year of that's been in lockdown. Well, branding photography, I think, uh... I've suddenly surrounded by all these branding photographers. I think it was, yes. I, I think a number of it is because they were following your, uh, uh, following my blog that you'd commented on. And then other people, you know, seem to have gone onto that blog. And as a result, I've ended up, and some of whom have, have said they wanted to attend and not been able to attend. Um, but we were talking about that with Nick at the early in the year. And we talked about the essence of branding and uh, what branding means. And I think one of the roles is to is an education job to educate the public or your potential customers who just think they want to photograph that they actually want something that builds their brand and and we're talking i mean the people we're talking to at the moment from a funeral point of view uh, i'm very well aware that if people have heard the word branding they think it's just throwing a logo together adding a few colors and think that's it and therefore you've got to spend time educating them that the brand your brand is your personality and how you want people to feel and how you've got to embrace that and it's much more than just a photograph any old photograph and it's much more than a logo totally paul sorry i'm gagging you know to say this yeah. you know the great thing about photography and, and a photograph is that within a second you can look at a photograph and that will tell you everything everything you need to know about a business. The business's values, how much they charge, what they do, everything in a second. What other marketing platform or tool can do that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get I, I, no, 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 I, I, I believe passionately in that. Uh, I also think that uh, video uh, can, the whole visual part, most of us are visual. No, no, no not with video. Right, okay. Why, why do you say that? Because a video, a video is, 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 is um, sorry, is subjective. Sorry, it's, okay, let me put it another way. With a video, it, it tells a story, but that is a story. You're being told one story. With a, with a photograph, you can take your own story and be involved in it on a much deeper level. A bit like reading a book or watching a film. Even shorter about looking at one word, and then reading a book, you know, having the word bollocks and then reading a book <laughs> all about bollocks. What keeps your ears apart? No one said anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you started me off. You started me off, Paul. Sorry, I was shut up. So that's uh, Marcus. Marcus, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you know, I love photography, um, yeah. and I was. You were very, you were very polite with with my photographs, but I think they they're probably slightly above average. I'd like to think so, but and I agree. A really good photo photograph, and especially, especially photographs from a professional, uh, if they are really are professional and stand, they stand out. Yeah. I mean, I see Nick's photographs, and they stand out. Yeah. Um, everybody seems to think they're a photographer. Although I will still take issue about the value of video 
And mm. video can be many forms. And we've been talking about stories today. We're talking about the importance of stories. And where I come from, video adds personality to communication versus an email or a phone call. I'd sooner get on a, uh, uh, in front of somebody on a call like this. Not everybody would, but you can, if you are creative, yes. still create a story. If anything can create a story, it must be a video because it depends how you edit it and it depends how you produce it. It doesn't have to be high production, but the television is popular and Netflix is popular because it's videos telling a story. I mean, some stories are quite uh, dramatic, you know. I'm watching, I'm watching Money Heist at the moment. If you've not seen that, that's fabulous. No. Perfect. Money, I've Netflix. watched. Yeah, Netflix, Money Heist, brilliant. Money Heist, I like that down. Yeah, Rebecca. Are, oh, you, yeah. are you joining in on Marcus's side or my side? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I think it's all valid, really. And actually, um, thinking about marketing specifically, if you think about Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, I mean, stories, the word gets banded around all the time. I mean, you've got stories on your Instagram that you can do. So it's sort of, I think, as the general public are really used to being told or shown branded stories that fit with a nice coherent picture. And people like that. I mean, that's that's the accounts that get the likes, are the ones that are really consistent and coherent. So I, actually, I think we've been... Like as public, we've been educated in that visual language a lot well, more. And we, I was thinking we, for Ira. YouTube, was, YouTube have just brought something in called Shorts in answer oh, to okay. uh, Instagram stories and uh, right, no, in, yeah. in answer to TikTok. But I think one of the one of the roles as a photographer is to actually convince somebody that they don't want an ordinary photographer; they want to tell a story. And you help yeah. them tell a story because that is what the branding is about. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. It's our job, you know, Rebecca, Marcus, and myself, we've got to educate the client base about what that photography can do for their business. We we shouldn't ever assume that they know that already. And I think no. it'd be, we're in a they very don't. dangerous place. With with smartphones and the democratization of digital photography, everyone's got a camera. So we've got to persuade them and educate them as to why we can add value and we can help them tell their story. Yeah. And, and actually crazy. talking, I had quite a good sort of, I guess, a discovery type call with a client, a, a client who's been a client for a while, um, an architect. But I did, because of our session, I focused a bit more on hearing his story. And, um, and I was trying to put more of a marketing angle on it, like talking about his project. What, you know, what, what hurdles did you overcome and things like that? What value did you add? But not using such that kind of way of asking but anyway at certain points he was like oh yeah I hadn't thought of it like that and oh yeah maybe we should get a picture of that and oh yeah that would make a nice LinkedIn story and so over the course of that conversation by the end he was way more sold on the value I was going to bring to it because because he could see I wasn't just going to go there take pretty pictures of his building they built it's going to be little bite-sized stories that he can then push out without even thinking about it because we've yeah. already come up with the stories so because he's not a marketing guy he builds buildings <laughs> most, of, most of your clients are not marketing guys I heard a no. very uh, and then I'm going to wrap it up I heard a very interesting uh, comment the other day uh, and I can't remember who, who said it uh, was that we're not in the business of features we're not even in the features of benefit we're in the business of transition where they are now to where yeah. they want to get to and our job yes, is to yeah. To help them transition into that so our job is to turn them in from being an ordinary architect to an architect that appeals to a certain sector by the stories that your photographs tell i'm sure i'm sure you all know this book here do we know this book i'm sure we all do this yeah we've got i've it. seen it on i don't know whether i might have seen it on audible this is what you yeah so it's back to fun i mean you've seen it nick haven't you i mean yeah. i would imagine most people very good, very, very good. Uh, Paul, you should check it out. You'd love it. I will do. Yeah. You will, Paul. As I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a man in transition. Oh. Right, that's right. So I'm going to go around now. Just tell me one thing you've got from today's meeting. Rebecca. Oh, uh, one thing. Actually, I've written in big letters, give us game, 
which I think is what Rob said. Nine. Yeah, I really liked that. And I think it's it's sort of especially the year that everyone's had, I think just just being you and putting yourself out there and mm-hmm. it will all come good, hopefully. <laughs> good. Uh, Chris. Um, I've got clarity on my pitch. Um, I've got to know uh, Marcus particularly, uh, which has been a, a treat. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's about clarity at the moment for me. So each time I do one of these meetings, I come out with more clarity about where I'm going next. I think that each, I think that is so important that the overall strategy, you're clear on that. If anybody's got a better one, please tell me because I've never come across one. Nick. Um, I, I, knew, I really enjoyed the process of thinking about the discovery call and giving the other person the space. I mean, I was trying to do it anyway, but trying to give that the space for the other person to talk and really understanding. I'm trying to think of the phrase you used, Richard. I think it was the journey, wasn't it? The journey someone's been on. And I think if you can think about their journey, you really get under the skin of what makes that person tick. Um, that was really valuable. Good. Andrew. I think the big one for me is to focus your conversations a bit more as well. Um, so I'm pretty good at having a chat, but um, you know, make sure you you come away with it with the, the information that you need um, to, to get people's stories and what have you. Well, I produced uh, for my BNI chapters, and BNI didn't do this. I produced something I thought was more meaningful when it came to a one-to-one meeting. If Marcus and Rebecca and anybody else would like a copy of that, I'll send it to them because it could really you know, it, it just helps you give your notes. You might not get through all of them, but it will just guide you so that you've got some structure to your conversation. Rod? Um, I think, you know, the, the, the whole purpose of this uh, group is that we can allow ourselves to be ourselves, as opposed to, if you're in a networking group, sometimes you sometimes you can't help but force yourself into putting yourself out there the way you think people want to see you. And uh, there's, mu- there's more honesty and clarity in being just yourself, whether it's dressed up like this or whether it's more relaxed. It doesn't matter. Just be you. And, um, you know, we can all help each other in many, many different ways. Again, <coughs> like I said, it's a giver's game. Yeah. Uh, Ira. I took away from this. I learned a lot from all the individual stories I've heard. Um and obviously getting to see different aspects of business is always useful. Well, there's probably as many people not on the call today uh, as is normally on. So I do hope you'll come back another time. Marcus. Ah, oh, thank you. Well, I think um, what I've learned from this is uh, what I'm going to be doing for the next uh, Tuesday, uh, rest, the rest of t- Tuesday mornings for the rest of the year. I think, you know, I've totally enjoyed it. And I'm just looking forward to come back. Great, thank you, Marcus. And, and if I may ask as yeah. well, Richard, a question from Richard: Have you ever in your life been uh, a part of injury and blockheads? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I travel to America, I always get questioned on what band are you in. Yeah, I know you're in a band. Always. It's the blockheads, mate. You belong to. You should be in the blockheads. <laughs> Maybe, 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 I was going to say, maybe you should have had an exercise. And by the way, on some weeks, we just take one person and we interview them. I lead the interview and everybody else pitches in. And that can be fascinating. And uh, maybe we, well, I don't want to distract from the work Ewan and Kelly are doing about his branding. But I can, I think he's, Richard's going to make one of the most colourful funeral directors in the whole of Norfolk. I think if we, we need a stylist, don't or we don't he think he, Richard doesn't think he needs a stylist, but a stylist, a clothes stylist, uh, etc., would do a great job of Richard. Richard, how do I you know the it? perfect stylist for Richard? Richard, I know the perfect stylist for you. Oh, Marty, you're in London, you're in Norfolk, aren't you? Norfolk, yeah. No, even so. Okay. Richard, uh, just a few words, please, uh, because you've got to go to a funeral on, on what you've got from the meeting this morning. Well, I, I, I thank everyone for um, uh, welcoming me to, uh, to the South West. And, and for me, it was it, it very much uh, about joining in the conversation, obviously with, with businesses that are, you know, uh, a five-hour journey away from me. Um, but what, what's come across for me this morning, that, you know, whether we're in the east of England or the southwest of England, we all face the same challenges um, and, and situations. And for me, 
a group like this is all about listening to each other although i'm probably not always come across in these things as being perhaps the best listener but it's observing and reading people is the key to this and and i've got a lot out of the the conversation with nick um uh, in our in our one-to-one um and and i want to thank everybody for for for, for welcoming me That's and right. i look forward to um joining in um, on, on future occasions. Maybe to help build awareness for your funeral business, we set one of these up in Norfolk. Uh, right, I'll leave you to that. Have a great week. Uh, I'll uh, send out that form to everybody and uh, I'll give you access. I'll show you where some of the previous uh, sessions have been, particularly one where Nick and, uh, um, and Mark uh, gave uh, sessions. So you, wherever it's appropriate, you get some value. All right, nice to see you all. Have a great week. Thanks, guys.